Hello, welcome to today's talk. And today I want to talk about cabin fever. So, if you're wondering what exactly is cabin fever, Wikipedia says that cabin fever refers to the distressing claustrophobic irritability or restlessness experienced when a person or group is stuck at an isolated location or in a confined quarters for an extended period of time. A person may be referred to as steer crazy, derived from the use of steer to mean prison. And yeah, I know many of us might feel that we are like in prison, but let me finish to read what Wikipedia says. A person may experience cabin fever in a situation such as being isolated within a vacation cottage out in the country, spending long periods underwater in a submarine, submarine, how do you say that? Or being otherwise isolated from civilization. During cabin fever, a person may experience sleepness or sleeplessness, have a distrust of anyone they are with or have a, an urge to go outside even in adverse conditions such as poor weather or limited visibility. The concept is also invoked humorously to indicate simple boredom from being home alone for an extended period of time. Cabin fever is not itself a disease and there is no prognosis. However, Related symptoms can lead the sufferer to make irrational decisions that could potentially threaten their life or the life of the group with whom they are confined. Some examples will be suicide or paranoia, or leaving the safety of a cabin during a terrible snow, snow, snow storm that one may step in. Now, this is something that many, many of us are suffering. And I sometimes suffer from it too. And I'm telling you, I'm a therapist and a clinical hypnotherapist. And some people are like, oh, you are anxious? Really? Yes. Also, we, the, even if we are experts about the mindset of how the mind works, we do struggle with anxiety and all these emotions because we are human. So it's a good thing that a therapist also understands emotions because Otherwise, you would be talking to a robot, and robots are not very empathetic. There are some people who are not empathetic, but that's another discussion for another time. And uh, I don't think that kind of person can be a good therapist, because if they don't understand emotions and they can't be empathetic, then that's a problem. Anyway, back to cabin fever. So cabin fever, it's... Um, it's a way to see the situation where we are in. And it's also people who are in jail who suffer about cabin fever, but, but we are not in prison. As a mindset hacker, I can tell you, what if instead of saying to yourself or to your friends, I'm stuck at home, because we are all stuck at home, and I know you feel like this, and I absolutely understand why you say that, but instead of saying I'm stuck at home, if you start telling yourself, I am safe at home, that's totally different. It's telling your mind that you're not in a negative position, you are safe and you're keeping everybody else safe because some of us might not know, but we might be a carrier of the virus because sometimes there are no symptoms. So if you tell yourself, I'm safe at home, I'm safe at home, I'm safe at home, you will start to believe it if you keep telling that to yourself. And that's a much more positive thing. What to do if you suffer from cabin fever? Well, first of all, even if you're working from home, get dressed. I don't dress every day for the office. I usually wear leggings and something casual, but today I'm showing up in front of you and so it actually even makes you feel better because you go in the mindset of like oh I'm going to the office so if you wear a shirt which is ironed if you wear a shirt that is I, I iron my shirt not today because I'm not a big fan of irony I don't like irony 
still I start to wire. Then I like it a lot because it's so relaxing. I wish life problem can could be just iron away, like when you iron coats and everything goes smooth and flat. But the concept of ironing is like, oh, I don't want to do it. And then when I start, it's like, oh, I'm feeling very good. Anyway, um, that was a parenthesis on my personality and how I don't enjoy ironing. I also put makeup and uh, I had to wear makeup because I am spending some nights awake because my body is all confused about what day, what night. And so I had to hide my puffy eyes as much as I could, put some makeup, some lipstick, because on the screen I was looking very pale and, <laughs> and I wasn't really, um, what, how can you say? Somebody looking at me might have not felt, why is this person so pale who looks sick telling me what cabin fever is when she's clearly suffering from it? I am sometimes suffering from it, but we need to focus on what's positive. So first, get dressed as you used to do when you go to work or when you go to school. Many of you, I know, I know you, you're dressing all like this business on for the meetings and under panties or boxers or slacks, which is fine. As long as you feel comfortable and you feel at your ease, that's fine. That is so comfortable. I'm trying to wear jeans once a week. So just to make sure that I can still wear them. Success, I can still wear them. Because we do tend to overeat when we are home. It's a, and it's actually normal. We don't have much to do. And food is one of the most interesting things of the day. <laughs> now, so get dressed. Maybe put some makeup. If you usually wear makeup to go to work. Just to make yourself feel as normal as life is normal as it can be and i know situation right now is far from ideal i understand that i totally agree with you but when life gives you lemon add vodka no i'm joking just to make yourself a lemonade which means in this situation what's the best you can do life is giving you a restricted style of life you're working from home or you are not working from home because maybe you got made redundant or you were looking for a job or you just started a business or you went on furlough, whatever it is. Some of you might not be working and they don't know how to fill their days. Some people are working and being also parents. Uh, and especially with small kids, it's very complicated. You can see people in meetings with their babies or toddlers in their arms or dogs jumping on the lap. And that's fine. If you have a small kid or a pet that jumping on, that's what means working from home. And you have nowhere to give the kid to because you're self-isolating. It's not that you can bring it to the kindergarten, give it to your parents. No, you're stuck with your kid while working with them. So I understand it's not professional, but now it's all about what's best for you. And some of us won't have the choice and the luxury to have somebody in the house because maybe living with a partner maybe also the partner is having a meeting at the same time on the same day so do, 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 do. secondly so first try to stick to as life as it's usually secondly don't one of the cabin fever symptoms is that you see everybody as a threat and right now the people who see everybody as a threat is like everybody has the virus and you go out of the house and you're looking at everybody with suspicion. Are they sick? Are they going to give me the virus? And it's a bit a paranoid thought, but social, um, media has made us very scared that this is a chance and actually it's not a simple flu. So if somebody sneezes or coughs, because the thing is, people are not scary, but we feel that everybody can be a threat because we know that this virus is carried by a person and the one we can take it from is somebody who's sick. So if you have symptoms, please stay at home. If you sneeze or cough, then you will make everybody else freak out. So the, the, one of the symptoms of this cabin fever is to feel everybody is dangerous. Everybody is a threat and is not. I have 
been trying to smile to everybody when I go grocery shopping and I live in the UK so I'm allowed to go once out once a day to have a walk or a cycle or a run I don't run I don't do that because I'm not that sporty but I do walk and when I go on my walks I try to say hello and smile to the people I cross roads with of course try always to keep the the safe distance to protect them and to protect yourself but I usually I hope that people who are out is because they don't have the symptoms so I'm trying to be nice and to make people um, connected and most of the people have replied back with a smile and say hello or they nod with the head so it's very few people who don't respond to the to the greeting and I have decided to keep doing that even when I don't feel it because I want to create this sense of community that we are all on the same boat because we all are but no people are not dangerous I understand you can get nervous if you feel if you hear somebody coughing or sneezing then it's like oh so you cross the road but a part of that try not to see people as a threat because it's a, an effect of the cabin fever and um, it's while it's a normal reaction that's not what you want you don't want to go out and be stressed because stress will lower your immune system and you need to have your immune system very strong because if you need to catch this virus by any uh, unlike events you want to be as strong as you can and then what you can do is make sure you eat healthy there has been uh, no such a time when we are eating everything we have at home and we are being so creative there are plenty of tv programs on tv where they teach you what to do with ingredients and last night i was watching jamie oliver which is back on tv thank you jamie i love jamie oliver because he can cook very simple dishes and what he's saying basically the, um, the episode from last night the dish looked yummy but also he's saying if you have this you can put this but you can put and he was giving options on what to put because we have a limited choice of what we can get outside so it's not that we have the luxuries like oh we need that kind of ingredient and no he's telling you you can use this or this or that because he understands that nowadays we're struggling to get the right ingredients so this is a way to eat healthier eat more at home try to stay away from takeaway or food deliveries as much as you can use them as a treat if you are somebody who loves them that's fine but use them as a treat and don't eat every day ready meals or food to go because even if they're yummy they are quite rich in usually sugars and saturated fat and blah 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 and instead when you cook at home you know which ingredients goes and and it's usually much more simpler. If you don't know how to cook, now is a great chance to learn how to cook. If you don't like to cook, there are always websites which have very simple websites that YouTube's where people teach you, no matter what level of cooking you want to learn, that is out there. Now there is no excuses. And it's very important we should all learn how to cook, how to put a dish together. Because food is what keeps us alive. So even if you're not used to cook, you have now the time. I like to cook, but not on a daily basis. And now I'm being more creative because I have more time. One other thing you can do to make you see your life feel as it was before is to make sure you contact your friends and family on a regular basis and maybe use more video. They've been they've seen that there is a raise in phone calls people are texting a bit less and calling more because we want to hear the voice of the person we love of our family members of your mom and dad and siblings and grannies and friends and so now with this technology we can also do a video so you can even see and see the reaction and just chat and also, if you were used to go out at the end of the weekend to have a drink with your friends, do the same. Do it online. Now, there was some water here, now I drank it all. But I know it's not the same. And I know that's not ideal. But remember, uh, now it's not a question of being ideal. It's a question of like 
this is better than nothing. And also trying to keep up with all the groups, people writing all over, ping, 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 ping. Everybody, everybody's pinging, everybody's sharing stuff. It's overwhelming. And you would like to speak more with your friends and family. So what to do? I have read this great advice that I'm trying to stick with. Every day, talk with two people. Doesn't matter who, if they're colleagues or friends. If you speak every day with two people, you will have at least spoken to 14 people in a week. And some days I really struggle to talk with those two because maybe I'm having a bad day because maybe I didn't sleep or maybe I'm more anxious than usual. But the next day I will feel energetic. Today I was feeling so good. I spoke with a few friends. I did a podcast with an amazing Dr. Ann Goldsmith that is, um, I'm going to publish soon. And um, she's an expert of working with teenagers and difficult children. And she's giving great advice on what to do on lockdown and how to recognize signs if uh, your child is depressed or um, feeling super anxious and stuff. So if you have kids that are teenager or, children or small, you might want to watch or listen to the podcast they have done this morning with her. Um, then, so keep contact with the people you love. And um, then what else? Da, 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 da. Try to eat healthy and exercise. Exercise, exercise. Maybe you love to go to the gym and now you don't have gym equipment unless you live in the big mansions. Because I've been seeing videos of these celebrities like, oh, <laughs> It's so hard to be into lockdown. I'm so bored. And they're showing the videos on, the, on their own gym. Now, not all of us have that. Me, certainly, I don't have a gym. But there are plenty of videos that are showing what you can do at home and, um, and also without any equipment. So there are options there for, to exercise even at the same time as others. So you have this sense of community. And because you really need to keep your body moving. If you stay all day sitting, there are so many things that you can risk, uh, including thrombosis. So you don't want that. Try to stand, even if you work from home and you're working on the computer, try to stand every time you finish an article or an email that was a bit lengthy. Ideally, every 20, 25 minutes, you should at least stand and stretch and maybe go for a walk or just exercise and stretch. Or you can do the dance. I love to dance and it's super cool because nobody can see you. You just need to put the headphones so you don't disturb the neighbors and you can dance. And it doesn't matter how bad you dance because nobody can see you. If you're watching the video, you might see me you now dancing. Okay, I stop. I, I heard you, I stop. Yeah, okay. Now, <laughs> I'm joking. I can dance very well. Anyway, so exercise is very important because it helps you to boost your immune system, to release endorphins, and endorphins are epichemicals. Also, try, if you have a balcony or a garden, stick your head outside the house. Even if it's very cold, cover yourself, but try to get daylight on your face, especially on the forehead, because daylight is very important, even if it's cloudy, because every day we should get at least 20 minutes of daylight minimum and it's important because it when we get daylight we produce vitamin d and um, and vitamin d helps us in our immune system boosts our moods so it's very good and if you're feeling super stressed and super anxious and you're feeling everything is gloomy first of all cut on coffee Coffee, it makes us anxious. So if you're a big drinker of coffee and you're very anxious, cut down on the amount and maybe consider to cut it all together if you can. But also think about whatever is working in your life. All the positive, what's working in your life. There are plenty of things. Even if you're scared and you're worried for your loved ones, there are plenty of things that are working. Your loved ones are fine. You are fine. And I know there is a lot of uncertainty about your career or your business, but this too shall pass. 
humanity has gone through many pandemics since we have been in this planet. Only in the last 200 years we have been through maybe 300. I don't know when was the Spanish flu. Maybe few. Let's say in the last 500 years, so I played safe. We have been with uh, various forms of cholera, various forms of plagues. The Spanish flu, for example, was one that killed thousands of people, recorded, who knows, in reality. And uh, we have been through other coronavirus now. Apologize if I'm saying something wrong, but I seem to understand that um, SARS, MERS were coronavirus as well and uh, swine flu maybe as well but also we have been through Ebola and uh, pandemics are something cyclic that happen and they are scary and they're terrible but we always had pandemics and we always will so it's something that at least now we have the tools because we have internet we knew what was happening in china we knew what was happening in italy i was very close as you can hear from my accent i'm italian i was in very close contact with my family and friends in italy so i knew that this was coming also to the uk and it was spreading it was just a question of time because i could see what was happening and i had a feeling the same will have happened here unfortunately I'm in the UK and they're saying that UK is two weeks behind Italy. Hopefully things will actually slow down so we won't have the same deaths as in Italy. But a part of these horrific numbers and statistics that are super scary and sad, extremely sad, there is some little positive things. And I strongly suggest you to focus on the on the good things as much as you can. The good things is that you are fine. Hopefully all your loved ones are fine. And um, the um, people who study, scientists who study uh, the movement of the herd have seen that se seismic movement has diminished because we are stuck at home. We're not using factories as much. Most of the factories are closed or they are slowing down production because people are not buying right now. And uh, so less factories that are active, less trucks, less trains, less cars, and the world is shaking less. So hopefully this is a moment where mother herd can heal. And, um, and also wildlife is uh, thriving, nature is thriving. So these are some aspects that are positive in this very scary and terrible times but also is forcing us to think on what's important in life turns out that all the money in the world and all the power in the world won't help you right now what is either helping you is you being a nice person or you're not and you can see the true nature of people because we are now all becoming more community oriented. We thought we were very selfish people, but instead we are seeing that we are clapping for our medical staff that are doing an amazing job to try to keep us alive and safe. And we are doing this as a community. The world is clapping and it's amazing. And we are helping the neighbors. We are asking the neighbors if they need groceries delivered or um, medicine to pick up or me being in a dog lover every time I, I walk and I see a neighbor is like by the way if you ever need help with your dog I'm a dog lover just knock on number five and I will help you so it's also making us um, a part of few cases that are uh, on the news most of us we are showing our brilliance our inside brilliance that we are kind we are caring and we are suddenly helping each other and it's amazing this sense of community that's been lacking for so many years 
we used to thrive in tribes. We used to live in tribes. So we all have our strengths. Some of us, we will cultivate the soil. Some of us will go hunting. Some of us will be uh, taking care of like uh, the healers will take care of the sick ones in the village. But honestly, we always lived in villages and everybody will do its own job. And now suddenly everybody's become individualistic because we are going to work, we are on our phones, we don't even talk to the person that is sitting next to us on the bus. We don't women want them to talk to us. It's like it's our world, we go to work. And so our life has shrinked very much with our friends and family. And we've forgotten about community, but now community is back. It's back and it's teaching us that if um, we take care of the other people, then they will take care of us too. And uh, also, for example, when people were hoarding on soap, which was panic buying, so people, when we are fearful, we don't do things um, on a, um, very rationally, so we do things in a very survival mode. Some people were hoarding on soap and toilet paper. The problem was, if you hoard on soap, and you buy all the soap that you find, and your neighbor can't find the soap, then they might be exposed to the virus and then they touch something that then you touch. So make sure that everybody has enough soap. Don't buy, overbuy. Soap, food is not going to run out. Maybe you won't find the cucumber for one week, but you're going to find other food. You're not going to starve. Italy had the lockdown for a few weeks, I think two more than UK. Since the beginning of March, I think they went on lockdown on the 10th of March, if I remember well. And even now they have food. So we're not going to run out of food. Maybe we have less choices because there is less movement of food and stuff because also farmers are struggling because suddenly we realize how farmers are important, how grocery people, how grocery store people are important because they are keeping us alive. And everything is made by people. So the farmers have people that collect fruit and vegetables and then make sure that arrives to the supermarket and then in our houses. So suddenly, also these people are working despite putting their life in danger because of COVID. So thumbs up if you are medical staff, grocery worker or builder, whatever you're doing. If you're still working because you have to, thank you. Thank you very much for making our life easier and simpler and safer so to recap if you're suffering about cabin fever it's totally normal we all do but there are things you can do to feel better on a daily basis and when everything gets so overwhelming remember live day by day i understand nobody of us know when this is going to be over but I believe this is going to be over one day because every pandemic has gone to an end. We're not going to wear masks from now onwards. I don't believe that because we will either have the immune system build up to fight this virus or people who didn't have it, but we need to keep them safe till the virus, uh, till the vaccine arrives. So I believe the life will resume soon. So let's take this chance to learn the lesson on learning what's important and to learn that less is more, stuff is not really what keeps you happy. What keeps you happy is having good relationship with your friends and if you are lucky enough also with your family and to keep going. I hope that this conversation today is making you inspired and that you will feel better next time you realize you're feeling overwhelmed or anxious or isolated. We are going to be fine. Hang on. We got this. I wish you well and stay safe. Bye.